guys thank you for hanging out with me today it's been a while but i felt the timing of this video is impeccable life gets busy as you all know and i'm so happy to announce that my first ebook just came out three days ago so i'm gonna put a link in the description if you want to go and check it out it's about how to use your personal business skills in your personal relationships so it's super practical because it will let you use the skills that you already have in your and how to implement them in your personal life without any further ado let's delve into the topic of today which of course is about Valentine's Day so I'm filming this video one day after Valentine's Day and the reason I did that was because I wanted to talk to as many people as possible who did not celebrate Valentine's Day and give you the dirt on what most people said about how do they feel if they are single or they haven't done anything on Valentine's Day and here it is of course the people who strongly and emotionally feel kind of I would say I mean it's fair to say to use this word bitterness uh, are mostly women. Women are mostly more emotional about that day than men. Or let's say the people that I've met and I talked to, and not only um, recently. I mean, I mean throughout. And and uh, the reason for that mostly is we have a lot of conditioning um, about Valentine's Day. So back in the day, I don't know how many years ago, of course, um, I kind of researched about Valentine's Day and um, I don't remember the history of it. It was just uh, Sam Valentine or something and I think it originated in Italy and it was very simple and it was like um, handmade cards or tokens of love. It was not the, the form that we know it um, in our days, especially in the Western societies where it's, uh, it's, it's, it's a major, major capitalist event you know where everything is overpriced uh, it's more about how much money you spend and the, the, the gifts and you know all these you know red roses and the hype uh, about like everything is red and and the gifts and the restaurants are like the you know the the set menus it's just like crazy and I remember when I was at high school, of course, if I was not dating someone at that time, I would feel so left out because everybody's coming to school with roses or hearts or maybe sometimes even jewelry and, you know, they express that to their girlfriends and if you don't have a boyfriend. The society in this day teaches you that simply you are not worth it. This is... This is, and this is until that day when I asked women, how do you feel if you're single on Valentine's Day? And so many of them said the same. We feel that we are, we feel lonelier than any other day because it's actually just another day on the calendar. If you are single on February 14th, you are, you were, you, <laughs> you were single on February 13th and most likely you are single still on February 15th so what changed on that day and it's all this conditioning uh, around that you have you are worthy and you are worth it if you are chosen if you are in a relationship you are validated and you um you you confirm what the, the the society and the social norms say about you as a woman like a beautiful successful intelligent woman you know should be in a relationship you know should be chosen by the man <laughs> 
which cannot be further from the truth actually and talking to men especially if they are in their mid 30s and up till mid 40s um, they would feel like their chances of meeting someone and celebrating is getting is diminishing and they are scared of growing old alone and not being desirable by women anymore and you know all these thoughts come into play but it but it's 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 fairly true if you have these fears they are amplified on february 14th but most people don't pay attention to these on february 13th or maybe february 12th <laughs> so my my suggestion and my invitation is don't let a, a man made for mostly profit and and to capitalize on your pockets dictate what you feel inside and always question these things and always question and if these feelings um, happen to come up just question them see where they are coming from so now it takes this takes me to the second point that i wanted to talk about which is when people used to tell me, you are the love you're seeking, it was just very outlandish for me. And probably if I tell you that right now, if I tell you, you are the love you're seeking, um, if you haven't felt or, or, or felt that experientially rather than intellectually, it won't make a lot of sense to you. It did not make any sense to me until I experienced that firsthand. What does it mean that I am the love I'm seeking? Well, first of all, let's say you have this, you have this energy of love, okay? Whether you're a male or a female, it doesn't matter. This love, you want to express it, right? You want to kind of like, projected on the outside so you it's it's about giving more than receiving it's about this expression of love okay you want to give it and when you give it it gives you pleasure so let's agree that this love is not necessarily does not have to be romantic so if you have this energy of love first you can express it to your pets or even animals in general you can you can express it to your friends neighbors family i know i know it doesn't give i understand this totally i'm not coming from another planet maybe i am yes but <laughs> for the for the purpose of this video no uh, and it's not like I've never been there and yes romantic love is different uh, an expression of love in, in, in that well situation for a man for me is different than expressing it for for a pet or or a girlfriend or but listen to this when I used to feel that charge of love and I didn't have an object of affection to express it to, even sometimes I go out with a male friend, friend, and even, you know, being able to hug him or we spend time together or just, it, it gives something. This charge of love, when it's expressed, is beautiful and it gets you out of your mind that it has to be expressed with a romantic partner it doesn't have to be expressed with a romantic partner that's a preference but it does not is does not feel less and it does not invalidate the other forms of love okay and back to the point what do i mean when i say you are the love you're seeking when a man or a woman comes to your life and you feel that uh, joy and you feel alive and excited and uh, you know you have this fire that got ignited what happened exactly let's go to the nitty-gritty of the subject here what happened is this person 
fits something or preferences that you like, whether in their behavior, their voice, their looks, the chemistry, and they triggered something, okay? But this joy, this love they triggered is actually within you, inside you. They did not give it to you. They did not give it to you. They triggered it in you. It's like the key, okay? that ignited something in you but it's in you and then you were able to express that that feeling because the fit the key fits the lock not everybody can trigger that in you right not everybody can trigger that it's exactly the same you cannot go you know like walking on the street and fall in love with every single person no it doesn't work that way there are some people you you it's like you know you go on a bus and you know it oh i love that guy i mean he looks amazing oh i love that woman oh my god i'm gonna have a heart attack like it's that but everything they triggered is actually inside you they did not give you anything. They were actually going to be the object of affection. You're going to project whatever is inside you and express it with that person and that and that will give you joy and will allow them to express back, sometimes not. So everything is within you. And in my personal experience, I knew that firsthand when when I met someone and we were not really together in that sense, like we were, it was just very random. But because that person was very open-hearted and gave me so much from their essence and the love was very pure in a sense of it was very universal first they whatever activity we've done together he did it with a lot of he did it from the heart let me let me put it that way it was from the heart and it was unconditional that's the word that we hear it all the time but sometimes we don't know what does that feel or mean because so many of us did not have never been loved unconditionally let alone like you know you say parents and mothers and well we are mostly raised to be loved conditionally if we do this then we're good kids then we're gonna be loved but I experienced with this man what is it like to give someone that you don't know unconditionally in that way even though there was there was a condition later on but you he, he didn't have to do it in that manner and when you are loved unconditionally that way then you will experience that you can give also unconditionally you can give without waiting for anything in return and then you will feel the immense pleasure of actually giving with no hidden agenda with no intention of receiving you just give because it feels so good to give and it feels so good to make that person in front of you happy because that person actually triggered the love in you, which is you. So I don't want to make that so complicated because as I said, it's not something that you can fathom intellectually. It's something really you have to feel and experience and it's going to change you because you will have a taste of what is it like to receive unconditionally and to love and give unconditionally and how good it feels and even because because in partnerships most men i coach they have this approach of pleasuring women because they want to have sex even with their partner which is which is legit 
But this is another level. This is another level. This is really the pleasure of giving someone without really wanting anything in return. And the pleasure that comes from that is immense. And when it happens this way, in this order, when a man gives a woman unconditionally, the woman opens up and blooms. And there is a reason for that. The women are caretakers by nature. This is their nature. This is how the divine feminine is wired because they are the incubators. They have the womb. So they are caretakers. This is how nature wired women. Okay? Or who? I'm not going to go through the rabbit hole of who identifies as what. I'm talking about women who are in a woman's body, reincarnated in a woman's body, and they identify as women. That's what I'm talking about. So, um, one thing more I would love to talk about in this video since we're talking about love and Valentine's. Don't let a relationship take your self-worth. Because we live in societies where, especially women, and I get this a lot. So regardless of how intelligent, how smart, I get asked this by a lot of men. Sexy, feminine, uh, accomplished, uh, successful, financially independent. Why aren't you married or having kids or this or that? Because this is an embedded notion that this is a sign of success. If you don't have a family, if you don't have a man, if you don't have kids, then something is missing. Are you cuckoo? Are you a lunatic? Are you a loner? Maybe narcissist? You know, you got all these very funny labels for me. And, and, and what I'm saying is, if you know that you are the love and what you want is a partner that you can share this love with together, he has done his part, you have done your part, the relationship does not add up to you, it's just you complement each other, you don't know, you don't need each other to buoy each other up or for 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 to heal each other you've done your healing on your own uh so don't let a relationship when it fades away when it never happened take your self-worth away you are worthy the way the creator created you okay when he leaves when she leaves don't give them something that you should have hold on to which is your self-worth yes of course i mean the intimacy is gone the story is gone but it's a story you can make other stories the story does not identify you you are the storyteller and the witness of the story you are the actor in your play so don't let not being in a relationship or breaking up with someone and a relationship that ended identify who you are you are a generator of love it's you are the reservoir you're not he's not he's just a trigger she is not she's just a trigger it doesn't have to be that when the relationship ended you also ended or that you are broken or there is something wrong yes there is maybe something you need to work on but it's never about the other person the other person was only somebody who pointed out that this is needs to be solved. You know, this needs to be taken into consideration. And the, the, the most important relationship is actually between you and you. Love is inside you every day, not February 14th not March 17th, it's with you every day and it's your choice to cultivate it and use it in every way and form and every opportunity you can. You can love every day a new person, a new thing. You can experience and express love every day in every 
shape or form because it is inside you. Don't keep it bottled inside you waiting for a man or waiting for a woman. Express it every way possible. And for women specifically, if you want to know more about relationships, I invite you to check out my course. I'll put a link in the description box. Relationships Demystified, a guide, step-by-step -step guide for women. Love yourself every day and express the love inside you because when you express it, it grows, it flourishes, and you grow and bloom with it. Don't wait for a man or a woman. Namaste.